Dragon Masters Book 2 Saving the Sun Dragon Chapters 2 and 3 Chapter 2 A Sick Dragon Anna looked up and started to scream. The other Dragon Masters also looked to the sky. Griffith pointed a finger at Kepri. I'll try to slow her down the wizard cried. Lightning sizzled from his finger, but before Griffith could use his magic, a red blur shot across the sky. It was Vulcan, flying faster than Drake had ever seen him fly before. He lunged for Kepri and grabbed her with his front claws. Go, Vulcan! Rory cheered. Vulcan flew in a circle around the valley, slowing down. Then he gently placed Kepri in the grass. Everyone ran to Kepri. The dragon's eyes were closed. Her breathing was loud and heavy. Anna stroked Kepri's head. Oh, Kepri, are you all right? she asked, her voice shaking. Griffith leaned over Kepri, frowning. I'm afraid she doesn't look well, he said. Anna turned to the wizard. She has seemed a little off since last week, when the tunnel caved in. She gets tired easily, and sometimes her eyes look cloudy. I should have said something. Griffith put a hand on her shoulder. It's not your fault, Anna, he said. But are you sure Kepri only started looking sick after that night in the tunnel? Anna slowly nodded her head. Yes, she was fine before then. Drake, Bo, and Rory looked at one another. A week before, they had all tried to sneak out of the castle with their dragons. Since King Roland wanted to keep the dragons a secret, most dragon training had to take place underground. The dragon masters had only wanted to get outside to do some night flying. Then a glowing red orb had flown into the tunnel that led to the valley. The red ball of light scared Vulcan, so he tried to get away. His huge body banged into the tunnel walls, and he made the tunnel cave in. They were trapped. Worm used his mind powers to help them escape. He broke up the big rocks blocking the tunnel, using only his thoughts. Worm had saved them all. But now, something was wrong with Kepri. Why did you ask about the cave-in, Griffith? asked Bo. The red orb worries me, Griffith answered. It must have been made by a dark wizard, as I had feared, and dark magic can make sun dragons sick. So Kepri's illness is connected to that weird ball? asked Anna. And the other dragons are okay because they're not sun dragons? I think so, said Griffith. Do you know any dark wizards? Drake asked with a shiver. No time for tales now, said Griffith with a wave of his hand. Suddenly Rory cried out, Look, Kepri is getting up! The dragon had opened her eyes and was standing on all four legs. She looks well enough to walk back to the dragon caves, Griffith said. Come along. He led the dragon masters and their dragons back through the tunnel. The tunnel led to the big underground dragon room. There, each dragon had a small cave.
When they got there, a big man with red hair waited for them. He wore a vest with a gold dragon on it and a metal crown on his head. Two guards stood behind him. Griffith stopped. King Roland, he said, what brings you down here? The king frowned. What is this I hear about a sick dragon? Key term, flashback. This is when a story talks about something that happened earlier. Did you notice while I was reading that on pages 14 and 15, there was a red rectangle? That part of the story is called the flashback. The author told us about something that happened in the previous book. Why do you think she did that? This is a question you don't have to answer. The reason is that maybe some people didn't read Dragon Master's book one. So this is a way, or maybe they read it and they don't remember, because those books were not released on the same day. For you, Dragon Master's book one was last week. For the people who bought book two, after buying book one, they might have waited a year. Okay, so this is the author's way of getting everybody caught up on what had happened before. So, two questions. Number one, how long ago did the Dragon Masters and Dragons become trapped in a tunnel? I'll give you a hint. It was mentioned in this chapter. Number two, why is Kepri sick? Chapter 3 King Roland's Threat Drake looked over at his friend Bo. He could tell Bo was thinking the same thing he was. How did the king know one of the dragons was sick? I have spies hidden in the Valley of the Clouds, the king said, as if he had read their minds. You almost let these dragons escape once, Griffith. I want to make sure they are ready when I need them. I understand, Griffith said. Drake remembered that when the tunnel had caved in, Griffith hadn't told the king that the dragon masters had taken the dragons out. Instead, he said the dragons had tried to escape. Griffith had lied to protect the dragon masters. Griffith had only wanted to protect us when he told that lie, Drake thought. But now the king is mad at him instead of us. So I will ask you again, Griffith, said the king. Is one of the dragons sick? Yes, your majesty, said Griffith. There seems to be something wrong with Kepri. All eyes turned to Kepri. Her eyes were cloudy, and her long, graceful neck was drooping. First, the dragons tried to escape, and now one is sick, said King Roland. This makes me very unhappy, wizard. You are supposed to know all about dragons. Heal her! I will look for a cure right away, Griffith promised. You had better find one soon, King Roland said, his eyes fixed on the wizard. If not, I will find another wizard. King Roland turned and stormed out of the caves. His guards followed. Drake's stomach did a flip. Another wizard? What would we do without Griffith? What do we do now? Anna asked Griffith, stroking Kepri's head. I have many books about dragons, the wizard replied. We will start there. We? You mean we can help? Drake asked. Of course, Griffith said. 
Please take your dragons into their caves. Then meet me in the training room. We must act quickly to save Kepri. To be continued.